Good morning. Yes. Why do I feel like I'm whispering? Well, I'm whispering partially because here I am drinking my blue. Um, Genetics HD, by the way. Um, oh, look at the birds. I need to go fill the bird feeders. Um, I, I guess I'm whispering because it feels like it's really early and it's very quiet outside. I have my doors open. Um, and my neighbors moved, so I'm not anymore gonna be, I'm sure you guys are disappointed, looking out there going, oh, look, there's the dog. Poor thing. I don't mean poor thing, but poor thing, probably me. She was such a cute dog. I miss you, Bella. Here's my genetics HD to you, because usually right now I'd be drinking this, shooting my vlog, and you'd walk up to my back door and bark. if you can see it. It actually just made my teeth blue. <laughs> now I'm not going to want to smile while I'm shooting this vlog. Um, <clears throat> and also, I very well could get a phone call from Bonnie, who I texted and needed, needs to call me, but I'm guessing she's busy. But if the phone rings, I'm going to have to stop shooting my vlog and call her back. I also have with me my other guest. coffee with coconut oil and cinnamon. I am hoping to go to Trader Joe's momentarily and hoping that they have the um, elusive, I think it's called like pumpkin spy, pumpkin spy, pumpkin spice, spice or like fall pumpkin spice. I remember seeing it on, um, back in the day, I remember seeing it on, well, I heard about it from Gina Aliotti on her DVD when she's making that zucchini um, protein bread. Is that right? Yeah, zucchini protein bread. And then I heard about uh, this Trader Joe's like pumpkin spice. It's a spice, but it's got like pumpkin in it, obviously. And I heard about it, I think, on Julie Goline's blog a long time ago. She was making recipes with it. So, um, anyway, a couple of things. Um, as I stated, as I shared in my, in my blog, day before yesterday. Um, I am making a commitment for the rest of the year to blog and or vlog every single day um, for accountability purposes because I certainly know that in the past when I did that earlier in the year it really kept me very accountable. So if I got to 8 o'clock at night and I'm having one of these days that I have in this life of me building this business where it's it's crazy. It was like that yesterday. I was literally call after call after call after call after call. And it was, I don't even know what time. Sure enough, I looked up and it's 7.30 again. I haven't eaten dinner and, you know, this is not what I want to do. I don't want to be reactive in my life anymore. I don't want to be, you know, running around like a chicken with its head cut off going, oh, you know, I haven't eaten and I haven't worked out. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not good to anybody that way because inevitably I end up getting pissed. You know, I don't feel good. Um, I certainly don't feel like I look good. I'm missing out. I'm not taking care of myself. It's just, it's, it's stupid. And really, it's on me. It's on me to take control and start putting things in place, schedules, habits, so that I can do everything I need to do. Which a lot of this is. Um, one of the things I'm going to do is start making time to read again. One of the things I started reading was, I did a call yesterday with uh, my BFF, Tom Terwilliger, who's also joining us as a Fitfluential uh, Ambassador Pro. He has a real serious um, like bodybuilding background, but he also has done a lot of work the past couple of years um, in, the, in what I would call personal growth and development kind of um, entrepreneurial space, if you will. Very, very good. Um, and so he and I were talking about just big picture, fitness stuff, um, goal setting and whatnot. And really a lot of this book, so he sent me the e-version of this book. I'm allowed to have printed, printed this out. And um, he sent me the e-version of this book and then he's sending me the hard copy. Um, I'll put a link up to it. But it's The Seven Rules of Achievement by Tom 
I'm going to put that up there in case you plan on getting it on Amazon, Tom Terwilliger. But I started reading the first chapter last night, and as you can see, I have a little note here, because this is, here's Bonnie calling me. Hold on one second. Hey, are you only available for another three minutes? Okay, can I finish my vlog? I'm shooting my vlog right now, so you're on my vlog. Can I finish shooting my vlog and I'll call you right back? <laughs> yeah, I called and it was like ringing or it was, it was showing that it was a time countdown, but there was um, like no noise. It wasn't ringing and it was just like connected. So I thought, well, I don't know, maybe she's got it on silent or something and I'll let her call me. I'll call you back. I'll probably call you back for my 224 number and give me like three, three or four minutes. All right. I'll call you right back. <laughs> three or four minutes. <laughs> probably be 30. I'm just kidding. Anyway, I, I really do have to cut it because I have to talk to her. Um, but anyway, there were two things, two things that um, I wanted to make sure I shared. One of them is this point that plays on what I'm about to say. But you guys, I, I've come this far and, and after spending a lot of time on the road recently and after being around people that are just amazing in the fitness space, whether it's Kathy Friedrich, um, oh, I don't have her video here. You know, Kathy Friedrich, who's been creating these amazing, really advanced, um, workout DVDs for years and years and years and is in impeccable shape um, at whatever her age is, you know, but she's not 20, I'll put it that way, if she's been doing this for 20 years. She didn't start when she was a fetus. Um, Valerie Waters, um, celebrity personal trainer. When I was up in, in Boston at the Reebok headquarters and I was um, hanging out with Austin and Jared and Caleb and all of these guys who are just like in, in incredible shape. Um, when I've been at the Arnold and I've seen folks that are, you know, getting ready to compete or they're going on stage or whatever. Here's this thing that I want to tell you, and, and I mean this at, at all levels, um, whether it's celebrity fitness trainers, somebody who's creating fitness DVDs, athletes, whatever. The people that, the people that you see, one moment, okay? Just see who this is. I don't know who this is. I don't have time to talk to you. Why do people call me without an appointment? I don't have an appointment and I don't do calls in the morning. You're very upset about this. See? Makes me need Botox. Anyway, after being around all of these people, here's what's what's funny and I think that it's funny but it's it's good to know. So many people like myself that are in this or have been for a while, you know, this perpetual, well, I've got 10 or 15 more pounds to lose or people that are always like, I still have five pounds to lose. You know, or, or you're always in a certain phase and you might look at somebody, you know, like an actress or like a Valerie Waters or like um, wh whoever it is, anybody who's creating these workout DVDs, anybody that you look up to in, in the fitness space that you, you see, um, if, you're, if you're reading Health Magazine or Shape Magazine and you see somebody like uh, Kristen McGee or uh, Rainbow Mars who's doing yoga all the time, you know, and you look at their physique and you're like, wow. You know, they're in amazing shape and, you know, they're there. I, I just want to get there. And I think too many of us regular Joes, um, we think that it's like either they're a different breed of person, that they have genes that we don't have or metabolism that we don't have and that they've gotten there and, and they're already there. They don't have to like work at it. I do think a lot of people think that. Let me tell you something. And oh, of course, thinking of um, guys, this isn't just girls. Um, Mike Roussel, Joe Dowdell, um, you know, these are incredibly talented uh, trainers um, that, that, that know anything you could possibly, when I ask them a question, I get an email back and I in instantly feel really stupid. <laughs> I'm kidding, but seriously. I've been around all these people in different, different uh, environments and whatever. Here's what I've observed. I don't care how old they are, I don't care what their particular uh, fitness focus is, um, all of them are still eating right, still working out consistently and hard. So I don't see any of these people with this like, have you ever heard of people talking about, well like I work out so much, I never watch what I eat. You know, I eat whatever I want, you know, or, or I just, weight just falls off of me. I have yet, I have been around all of these types of people now in the past six months 
and I'll tell you what, I see them, you know, they're eating salads with chicken on it. They're eating, um, you know, uh, and, and whatever their approach is. I'm not saying like, in the past I've done that, I would be like, oh, if Carla's eating that, that's what I should do. That's what I should eat. Like there's some secret magic sauce. The secret magic sauce is watching what you eat, making sure you've figured out the amount that's right for your body. You know, for some people it's, if you're working out more, you need to eat more um, so you're not, you know, in starvation mode, whatever. I don't want to get off track here like I always do. Being around all these people, they're still watching what they eat. They don't drink all the time. They don't cheat all the time. They consistently work hard at it. They consistently have to tweak it. Um, if you look at somebody and you see that they have a really great physique or they are very lean and have, um, you know, again, don't, don't look at anybody and go, oh, she must have a really good metabolism. It must be easy for her. Let me tell you, I've been around all these people and I don't want to say like they're obsessive um, and doing anything that's unhealthy, but these are people that have been doing it for a long time and they are still, um, you know, they have a diet approach. I don't want to say they're on a diet, but you know, they're not getting up and, and having eggs benedict and, and bagels with cream cheese and, and pizza and being, you know, they don't have this attitude like I can eat whatever I want because, you know, I've gotten here. No, they watch what they eat every day. They're working out every day. So people like me that haven't gotten where they want yet, that still have to say, you know, you know what? I've got 15 pounds until I'm at my goal weight. There's a reason that I'm not there yet. You know why? It's no excuses. It's very simple. You know, I can look back at the last three months and I have not worked out six days a week for the last three months, period. That's just a fact. I can say why I haven't done it, but until you're there, you know, these are the results you get at this level of activity. You know, if you want these kind of results, it's going to require this level of activity. It's going to require this level of paying attention to your diet. Some people don't want that level of results or they don't, they want the level of results, but they're not willing to do that kind of work. Um, that's the trade-off period. And it doesn't mean that it's easier for a celebrity fitness trainer or an NFL athlete or whatever. It's a matter of what you want and it's a matter of goal setting. And that's what, you know, when I started reading Tom's book last night, I realized, and as I was talking with Val yesterday, <laughs> I realized that I've got everything I need in my head. I know everything I need to do, okay? I've made progress this year, but I still haven't done, you know, I still haven't continued. I, I've gotten a certain, a certain amount of time, and then I started letting work get in the way again. It's very easy with me, with my company. Um, and I've got a call in 25 minutes. Um, it's very easy for me to keep letting this this company roll me over and I'm realizing very uh, critically as I'm getting towards the end of the year if I want to make progress I've got to put things in their place and that means that I have to find a way to um, not just do it temporarily but make a life change so that um, you know I was talking to my president he said I get up and I do my workout first thing in the morning get it out of the way it's done and I feel so much better and I have the intention I have the desire to do that and I don't. It's because I'm not putting, you know, I haven't put schedules or habits in place yet so that I'm doing that. Intention and desire only get you so far because if you're, I think they, there's a quote that says there's a difference between, oh God, I don't know how, what it is, but it's talking about, you know, essentially what I just said, the difference between having this idea and actually doing something about it, that's when you have to really get aggressive about making a goal and an objective attainable. You've got to have action steps, and that's one of the things I haven't been doing. It's all about, well, I'm gonna do this, and I want to work out, and I need to have a plan, and then I don't do it, and I watch everybody else around me um, making time for it, and I'm not. So here's this quote that I'm gonna share with you, and then I've got to call Bonnie. Um, he had said in his introduction, he said, he was talking about, you know, kind of, a, he was in a bad place, whatever, he said, uh, after losing a lot of hair and countless hours of sleep, I concluded that the reason I wasn't moving forward had everything to do with not having set any clear goals or objectives. I just wasn't doing my thing under the illusion that I was moving forward when in fact I was slowly creeping backward. And all I'm telling you is I read that last night and I'm going to continue reading the rest of this book. And I realized, again, 
and, and he talks about it in here too. He says, you know, you can think that you have goals and you can think you could put up, you know, a, a, a written out statement and put it on your refrigerator and, and look at it every day. But if you haven't figured out, like, this is what I want and this is how I'm going to get there. In fact, what was it? Uh, oh, I was reading um, Tom Venuto's book. Uh, which I'll, I'll put the link up to too. And one of the things he said about is people don't think, oh, I want to lose two pounds a week. And then they figure out what that is. And if you really figured out, like he was, he was giving an example of one woman who said she wanted to lose three pounds a week. And he was illustrating to her why that was not attainable um, because of the either the caloric um, uh, decrease that she would have to do and or the workouts. It simply wasn't doable or she would be, you know, um, you know, not eating anything. It was just, it, it was a scientific, the way he figured it out, he's like, look, if you do this, and, and this is the, the amount of calories that you have to cut, you're, you're, and then you work out this, it's just not, you know what I'm saying? I'm not even saying this correctly, I haven't had a lot of coffee, but sometimes you actually have to look like, okay, a calorie is 3,500, um, excuse me, a pound is 3,500 calories. If I went to lose two pounds a week, that's 7,000 calories, or a thousand calories a day that I have to cut. Um, so how do you cut a thousand calories if you're supposed to be, you know, eating it at 2000 calories for maintenance or whatever, it's not healthy to cut a thousand calories and be eating a thousand calories a day. So at that point, then you cut 500 and go to 1500 and then you have to burn 500. So it's like, it's an equation. You've got to figure that stuff out. You can't just go, yeah, I think I'll eat, you know, um, 1500 calories a day and I'll work out four days a week. If you don't have a plan, then you're just like shooting you're just shooting at nothing and that's what i'm realizing is that i've had the you know all these great ideas and i think i'm doing it but i'm not i don't have any plan and and i'm not following anything and i'm certainly not tracking enough i'm at 16 minutes um we're going to come back and do another one i've got to call bonnie i will talk to you guys later but let's start paying attention and get really aggressive together in our goal setting and we're going to make it happen that's all there is to it I'm going to do what I haven't done for two years, which is get really aggressive with my goal setting and my tracking and make it happen.